Welcome to Chassis Magazine 171. The top tournaments of this issue are the yeah, Big Super Tournament, which in a way dominates also the issue in Weigansee, which was won by world champion Magnus Carlsen, which 9 points out of 13 games. Second was Fariano Carana and third Ding Liren. All three have annotated games for this issue. There are many more annotated games and Daniel King has made 13 um, videos with the summary of the of the rounds. So this really is a lot of material. For this video format I had to delete almost all the annotations of course. Magnus Carlsen has made notes on his win against Michael Adams. Uh, the first question for Black is where to put the rook. Can the, or can the pawn e4 be taken or not? And it can be taken. After rook e5, white surprisingly is uh, very comfortable and, and, and a lot better as Magnus explains in his notes. But after rook takes e4, white basically has nothing because after the following sequence black has knight g5 and knight e6. And okay, white can win back the pawn but that's basically it and then it's more or less completely equal. There was another, oh, man, many fascinating moments. Uh, then I only want to highlight this last one, rookie one, check and now of course not king c5. Magnus avoided falling into this trap. But of course um, it's clear that after <laughs> uh, king c3 white wins as the past pawns are too far advanced and too strong and so Michael Adams resigned. Fabiano Carana has annotated his win against Luke Van Whaley, a very sharp and enterprising Sicilian. Both kings are open but white strikes first and then what had Luke missed or underestimated? Queen h2 check. And now his king is in the way of his attacking pieces. And uh, Karana won after some further moves as his attack is stopped by, by his own king while the g-pawn is too strong and black is also miscoordinated. Ding Liren has made notes on his win against Michael Adams, but here black can still defend. I also look at uh, this in, the, in, in an interactive endgame video. Okay, 98 was a mistake. I uh, help you by saying that this is right, but now comes the difficult moment. Knight c7 would have drawn, as I also explain in an interactive endgame video. The next uh, super tournament was Gibraltar, where Nakamura won uh, against um, Maxim uh, Vashilagraf. They had the same number of points and then had to make an, uh, play uh, for the victory. And in Zurich, which was uh, a longer rapid, uh, yeah, a mixture of longer rapid chess and uh, blitz, ch blitz chess. And here Nakamura had a better tie break than Anand, so everything works the way Hikaru Nakamura wants it. When he uh, has a better tie break, the tie break counts. When not, then there are further games are played and he beats Maxi Maxime Bashir Lagraf. There are 12 opening surveys. Oh, this, I should do this first. A new author for chess base is Valerie Bronsnake, who has written many, many books and is a specialist of the Chigorin in the Queen's Gambit. Okay, here Shetty Short had this move order. There are of course other move orders to reach uh, the Chigorin defense against the Queen's Gambit. And yeah, it is the original counter-attacking defense. And here it is important not to take on F3 too early as Bronsnik explains and he thinks that here Black has good counterplay. A6 it was Kramnik short the race in Olympiad, but here in Shetty short, Nigel short played f5 and got good counterplay on the king's side and won later. Because if black doesn't take, if, if uh, black does take on f3 too early, 
then White can play this very strong plan as in Borovikov, Süßmann, and then White has a lot of play in the center and on the king side, and here, here White is a very, very good position, so you shouldn't take too early as Bronsnik explains. But the Chigorin defense might be interesting against the Queen's Gamut as counter, non-standard counter-attacking option. Non-standard, of course, basically is a knight on c6. Usually the Queen's Gamut player will play c6 or c5, but... Yeah, these the, these pictures are a bit unique, but they they can be played according to Valery Bronstick. Alexei Kuzmin looks at another uh, black uh, defense against the Queen's Gambit. Slav, and now if White tries this setup after e6 to reach a Miran, and otherwise we have Queen b3, then maybe Black can just sacrifice the pawn according to Kuzmin's analysis, and now Knight c6. White wins a pawn, but black is very active, many tempi, and yeah, a lot of activity, almost everybody is already developed. Black is yeah, good compensation, as Kuzmin explains in his article, and this may be an interesting alternative to transpositions to Miran systems or other, other transpositions. This is much more active, but okay at the price of a pawn, of course. And finally, Robert Riss looks at um, a variation of the Blumenfeld gambit. And now the e4 counter gambit. There are no Blumenfeld setups. White um, yeah, has a big advantage in development. And now a Swane seller may be improved by bishop f4. Everybody is developed. White has strong pressure. Absolutely no Blumenfeld kind of position. So, um, yeah. A good and very active and aggressive idea. The e4 gambit explained by Robert Riss in detail. There are two opening videos. Um, one uh, complete system against the Karokan by Sergei Tifikov. In the second move, d3 d5 and then knight d2. So in an, a world again all by itself and maybe this is interesting for you as white or if, as Karakan player maybe you need a weapon against it. So have a look at Tivikov's video and Simon Williams looks at um, fascinating anti-Grünfeld weapon Against the King's Indian player, it may not be so good, but or it may not re reach so much. But against the Greenfeld play player, this is poisonous. Look at Williams' video. I don't want to sh say more here now because it gets too complicated. Look at Simon Williams' video for more information if you are interested. Or if you are a Greenfeld player, then of course it may also be worthwhile. Yeah, in the columns, I look at the power of past pawns in the endgame column. Um, Simon Williams looks in move by move at short Harika Dronavali from the Gibraltar Open where uh, she won and uh, this also won a brilliant C-Prize and really solve all the questions yourself first before you look at the answers. Oliver Ray looks at Hanging Queens in the Tactics column. This is Nakamura Berlin, white to move and win from Gibraltar. Yeah, E6, opening the diagonal then exploiting the vis a vis, winning the queen first and the game later. So this was not so difficult, but really solve this tactical exercise to keep your eye sharp. This is very good training material. Michael Marine looks in the strategy column at the blockade. Jamolinski Kasparov, Vikansee 1999, and I always like how Marine manages to combine the new games with the old famous classics. How did Kasparov continue here with black? Rook d6. This is very important. First the rook should be activated and only then the knight can go to the blockading square and then everybody is active. The knight is much better than the bishop. This is a very good Anderson endgame for and Kasparov went on to win. By knight 8 on the other hand, is nothing special because um, black somehow is not, black's rook is not so active here and this is more or less equal. And last not least, the opening traps by Rainer Knack. He has selected 5 and I have selected 1. Krokenberger Blaschke, Stauffer Open 2016. Oh, 
is one line and now uh, typical a5 knight d4 knight d2 and here queen c8 is the right move but knight d5 is played quite often in uh, practical games and looks more natural but it loses a piece by force so with yourself first and only then watch the solution on the dvd by reiner knack and now i wish you a lot of fun with chess magazine 171